Hello, hello. I thought I would share some things around a common complaint that I'm hearing again and again. And it's not just recently, it's always. Uh, one of the biggest things that I think people struggle with is energy. It's one of the biggest complaints I hear. And I just wanted to talk to that this evening. I went and did a ice bath this afternoon and an infrared sauna and I'm feeling really good and that shifted my whole energy and I I haven't spoken about energy for a little while in here and I just wanted to jump on so if I'm talking and you're watching this live give me a hello and also let me know if you've got any questions um, around this because it is a really big topic it's something a lot of people struggle with and I think the problem is we look at it very the mainstream system, the way that we look at health, is not looking at it from a vitality, a health of vitality point of view. We're not, we don't look at it, what's required to be vital. If we go to the doctor and we say, I'm feeling really tired, they will go and do blood tests. And often I hear people say, I went to the doctor and I got everything tested and everything's fine, but I don't feel fine. But the reality is when you go to that system, that system is not a healthcare system, it's a sick care system. And I experienced this myself when I had my kidney out almost 13 years ago when I said, what do I eat and drink now? I've had this cancer and why did I get, why did I get sick and why did I get this tumor? And, and it was just, I didn't get any answers, but it was also just eat and drink as normal and they knew nothing about me. And so, when I was asking those questions like, what do I need to do now to look after myself? I was never going to get the answers and I had to go looking for my own answers. And so in that journey, I have learned many things and also had to overcome many mountains and milestones for my own self because I used to struggle a lot with fatigue and there's as different aspects to looking at this. And so when we're looking at vitality as opposed to sick care because when we're in that sick care system when even when you go and get your blood tests done they're looking at a range that is so now so wide and gets wider and wider and wider and wider that when you're within the range you could be even on the very outside of that range and they'll be like oh it's fine there's nothing here rather than actually looking at what the optimal healthy ranges are like what's an optimal range for different aspects um, for the body to be healthy and vibrant and vital for longevity for good health and to be in balance and they don't look at it like that they're looking for a disease state the the sick care system has been trained to look for a disease state and so whether it's your thyroid or your iron levels, they'll just be like, oh, you're low in iron, but we're not going to do anything about it. Or maybe just take some iron and give the wrong form of iron. They look at your thyroid and your thyroid will be within range. But in reality, your thyroid is actually not working properly because they're looking at ranges that are out here. And the reality is actually we want it to be humming along really well. And the ranges should be within this narrow window. For things to be working optimally yes and so when I'm looking at energy first of all let's go back a bit energy is the currency of health and when we're looking at energy energy is yes how much I can do how much I can output what I can do what I can get done in the day I've got to like how I get out of bed how I feel but it's not just how much you can get done and tick off the list it's how I feel about my own body in my own in my own body about myself and how others feel in my presence so when we're talking about that level of energy because we are energetic beings we're all matter we're actually if we get real granular we go what are we we're 99% 99.99% not matter like not physical being we're actually vibrating and if you want to go quantum physics on it it's like we are actually this is all energy 
And there's not a whole lot of matter there, actually, if we get real physical and get really truth about that. So that means we have energy in different forms. And that includes, you know, when you walk into a room and you feel someone in the bad mood, before they've even opened their mouth, you know that you feel their energy. And so we're talking about how your energy impacts the other people in your life, how you um, can can also impact people through influence people, how you can interact with people and enjoy other people's presence because you haven't got your own shit going on and you're able to be present and as well as being able to go and get stuff done, to wake up with energy, to be able to go through, um, it's telling me to close unused applications, okay, to go through my my day without actually feeling like I need to drink a million coffees, you know, like the state of my nervous system. And so there's three big aspects to this, yes? There's the physical. So my physical being, 3D reality, what I do, how I move my body, and structurally how that impacts. There's the biochemical. So the food I eat, the vitamins and minerals I absorb, or the macronutrients, the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins that get converted into energy. And then there's the, and all the aspects that impact that. The things that act, we're talking about, your thyroid health, your hormonal health, that's the biochemistry. And then there's the nervous system, our emotional health, and the state of our nervous system, which also will impact our energy. And we're talking about all three. But physical is often where people will go, physical, food, energy. There's only a few things I see people look at when in reality they're not looking at the whole picture and how everything's interacting. And so physical world, I'm going to notice I'm standing up at the moment. Are we sedentary all the time? The irony of energy is actually the more we move our bodies, the more we have, providing that we're not burnt out. And sometimes moving more, often moving more is going to actually give us more energy. And how are you moving your body? How are you breathing? What's your posture like? Are you sitting down all day? Are you standing like sitting is the new smoking? Um, How is that physical reality really impacting it? Are you walking on the earth? Are you getting out in the sunlight? Physical, yes? Biochemical is what's happening in the body. And one of the big things with energy is what's happening with my thyroid. So thyroid is like the puts the foot on the accelerator or takes the foot off. It's it's our metabolism, but it also is our energy. It's also responsible for digestion. It's for our heat. It's our thermostat. And so it controls so much. And so when so when our thyroid's slowing down, it's not working as efficiently we slow down, we get tired, our digestion becomes more sluggish. And so, and you, and there's a lot of symptoms that are um, relevant to thyroid function. Our brain doesn't function as well. We can't think as clearly. We don't sleep as well. We, have, we get more constipated. We're more prone to constipation. Our skin dries out. We lose hair. Um, that's all, a lot of that is um, indicative, like indicating thyroid issues and even though your chemistry comes back fine you're like why don't I feel well and this is one of the biggest parts of the biochemistry when we're looking at at things is going why does it keep getting missed I tell you why it keeps getting missed because the way that the conventional um, medical system looks at thyroid is not even looking at the whole thyroid and so stuff gets missed because they don't even test full thyroid. And this is really important. And so if, if I had a dollar for every time someone said, the doctor said, I'm fine, and I look at their thyroid and I'm like, it's a little slow, it's not working, or it's autoimmune, or you're not converting as well, or your reverse T3, which is part of your, um, your ver- reverse T3, which is part of your, uh, part of your thyroid function is actually blocking you from getting thyroid hormone into your cell. You need thyroid hormone in every single cell of your body to to allow things to happen. The other part is your mitochondria function, your efficiency of your mitochondria, and they're interconnected. And so 
uh, if we are not getting energy in and not able to make energy, like actually create ATP efficiently, that means getting food, converting it into actual energy currency. If we don't do that, we will also get exhausted because we're not just not getting the fuel in, we're not able to efficiently um, create that. Now, a lot of that is to do with insulin resistance, it's metabolic syndrome, so storing fat. As soon as you're insulin resistant, you, you, your mitochondria becomes inefficient. You're not, you're not getting the energy in. What is insulin resistance? Well, first of all, insulin's a hormone. A hormone's a chemical messenger. Insulin allows glucose to get into the cell, to get into the little powerhouses called mitochondria that live in the cell and create the energy to the factory, the factories in every single cell of our body. And when we have too much insulin, which is from too fluctuated blood sugar levels, we then make insulin, our, our cells become deaf to the amount of insulin. We need more insulin to, for, to get the same amount of energy in. And our cells become deaf to the insulin. And the body's like, we're just gonna park that as fat right now because we, can, we can't have high elevated blood glucose levels all the time, it's dangerous. We need to park this as fat and we will store it in the body and we'll deal with it later. Yeah, and this is excess carbohydrate consumption, excess sugar, excess grain, too much of it. It causes insulin resistance, it causes fat storage. And so then it causes us to not make energy as well. And so when this combination, and this will impact also our thyroid and the way our thyroid works. And so it's really, really important to um, look at these. The other thing that will impact, impact those and that energy function is, and the way we make our energy in the mitochondria is vitamins and minerals. And we need lots of vitamins and minerals. We need B vitamins um, to create uh, manufacture energy. We also need a lot of vitamins and minerals to create thyroid hormone. And that will speed up the process or slow down the process because remember the thyroid is the foot on the accelerator or takes it off. Foot on the gas takes the foot off the gas. And so when our thyroid um, isn't working properly, often that's from a lot of vitamins and mineral deficiencies. And so that is really important. And that is the other thing is a lot of the time when, when people go and get tested for vitamins and minerals, First of all, they don't test all the minerals when you go to the doctor. They, a lot of things don't get. Iodine is really important for thyroid function and they do not test for it unless you pay for it. It is one of the main ingredients to thyroid hormone and they do not test iodine levels. Australian soils are very low in iodine. We do not have enough in our soil as well as a lot of people now don't eat iodized salt. They put iodized salt in iodine in salt for this reason, because one of the causes of low iodine is, is a condition called goiter. And so they figured out, okay, if we put iodine, it stops goiter. But there's a lot of people even not eating as much bread as, as they used to. Um, our dairy production has changed. We used to, have, um, the pipes used to be cleaned with iodine. They don't have, that doesn't happen anymore. There's lots of changes happen to food production and the way people are eating. I'm not saying go eat iodized salt, I'll talk about that in a minute, but that are impacting also our mineral status. And on top of that, things aren't being tested. And so this is really important. If you're thinking about also, by the way, having a baby, please, for the love of God, go and get someone to test your vitamins and minerals and do it properly, including iodine. Really important for cognitive development of, of an unborn baby. You do not want to be low in iodine when you're pregnant, right? And so... All of these vitamins and minerals that are important for our thyroid to function, we need selenium, we need iodine, we need vitamin D, we need zinc, we need our B vitamins, we need vitamin E, like there's, there's this whole array of things that we need for our thyroid to function properly that is going to impact our energy. And when they look at it, when, when you go to the doctor and they look and they go, yeah, it's fine, but it's not because it's, it's this wide range and you can be what's called subclinical deficiency. And so that is really a big part of when we're looking at energy and how does that happen? Okay, well, it comes through food we're eating and also how we're absorbing it. 
So if iron is one of the other things that people will immediately go to, iron deficiency is really big in, in our culture. And there's often reasons for this that will also get missed. So um, gut issues, gut um, parasites, um, bacteria overgrowth, a condition called SIBO that will affect iron um, absorption. There's a, um, a parasite that can live in your gut called Helicobacter pylori, which can also impact, um, cause low iron. Celiac disease will cause low iron. There's, there's a few different things. Uh, I think mainstream will look at celiac if it's a real problem. Also, if people are having cycle issues or heavy periods, heavy bleeding, that can impact it. But there's a few different things. Parasites will cause iron to be low. Inflammation can also often cause iron to be low. Other mineral balances of minerals, heavy metals can cause iron to be low because iron is used as a, as a, as a way to chelate other metals, um, to protect the body from other, me from other things more damaging. Um, it's used in the inflammation process. There's aspect, different aspects to this, right? And so sometimes there's a lot of people that have issues with iron and it's like why where's that coming from you've got to do quite a bit of investigation and figure out where's why is there low iron it's no good just consistently going through your whole life having low iron why is it oh is it absorption is it through the diet you're not getting enough in is it are through other factors that could be impacting this um so that's the biochemistry there's many different level layers to that but there, that's the thing. There's, it's like you need someone to look at what's going on for you who's going to look at it from a vital point of view, not a, no, you're okay because you're in this range that is so wide and you're fine. And not looking, not looked at by a sick care system, you want someone looking at it through a health care system. What, is, what does it take to be healthy and vital and vibrant? What does optimal health really look like? Um, what is that based on optimal levels of blood work and and, um, and functional pathology rather than actual just oh yeah you're fine you're in range I see so many people would be low in iron and actually it gets missed so that's that's a big part of it um, and there's many things many subclinical deficiencies that get be going on for a long time before they get picked up if they get picked up or when there's long-term consequences of that so when we're talking about energy we want to go back to the, the 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 key ingredients what does it take to bake a cake you know like what are the fundamentals what are the core ingredients that we need for our body to function well and why is it being why is there a deficiency and often it will be over long term. I saw a stat this afternoon. I was on another training um, that was like only 6.1% of Australians are getting their the recommended amount of fruit and veggies in each day. 6.1%, and that's crazy. They're not getting, and then you know, like it's it's uh, you five and two, five servings of veg, two servings of fruit. That's not even like World Health Organization has a lot more than that. And so when we're looking at energy, it's like, okay, what's happening from a biochemistry? We've got to start with the simple things, a diet, but you've got to start to look at it properly with the levels and even the way that you're testing things, you know, um, and how things can be influenced. Now, the other part to energy, like I was saying before, when we're talking about energy, it's how we feel in ourself and stress and how we sleep. And what we're ultimately talking about is our nervous system. And so how is our function of our nervous system? And so what are the fundamentals of our nervous system? Are we in a safe state of safety or are we in a constant state of alarm? And when our nervous system is in that constant parasympathetic uh, state, we're fight or flight, survival mode, we use up a lot more vitamins and minerals as well. And it gets to the point where if you've got huge levels of cortisol going on, background alarm going for a long time, eventually this dysfunction happens. It's called HPA axis dysfunction, which is between our hypothalamus, our pituitary, and our adrenals. And it's dysfunction in the, the way that we're making cortisol starts to become dysfunctional and we'll have cortisol surges at the wrong times. 
And so this is when people start to get, they can't get out of bed, they've got to drag themselves through the day, and then they might pep up in the, in the afternoon, or you're relying on coffee to get going, and your cortisol is surging, um, but you actually are not having, it's it dysregulating you, it's causing issues, it's actually impacting your energy. And a lot of this is to do because we're highly caffeinated, um, the uppers and the downers, like the caffeine in the morning, the wine at night, is how your nervous system is in full alarm. And this is also comes down to the emotional component. If you've heard me talk about this before, our the way that our nervous system function is is to do with when we're talking about alarm why are we in alarm we want to start to get to our bodies to feel safe we need to feel safe and a lot of this is to do with not just what's happening now it's to do with our past experiences our un, unhealed traumas and wounds that are impacting our perception of the world now the way that we view the world and if we're constantly don't feel safe because we have this wound that's like a scab that is I'm not good enough, I don't I don't feel safe, I need to feel seen, I need to prove myself, that hypervigilance that kicks in. Um, I've got to do, 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 do because I, I don't feel good enough, I've got to prove myself. Um, or this constant, you know, whatever that state of alarm is, or what's the point, you get past that point and go, what's the point of going to shut down? That's a safety mechanism that your nervous system has learned to cope because that is how you learn. That's how you've survived. You go into survival mode, like let's shut down and preserve. It's depression. That's, you know, when you go into deep, deep depression in slumps. And... When we have these dysfunctional related things, a lot of it's to do with our nervous system, it's to do with our traumas from the past that need to be healed, that need to be reconciled, that need to be um, integrated so that we actually learn to feel safe in our own bodies. Because otherwise, the background alarm runs the show and there's heightened levels of cortisol that go on for years and years and years, eventually lead to burnout. And then you get things like chronic fatigue. Whenever someone comes to me with chronic conditions like chronic fatigue, I'm like, what's happening emotionally? What's your trauma? What's your wounds? What's your... And I can tell what their nervous system and there's a state of exhaustion going on. And so there can be the physical, the biochemical components which imp are impacted by the emotional. And there can be other biochemical aspects, physical aspects, such as... Um, mold toxicity, environmental toxins as well, that's also a stress on the body. When we're talking about stresses, it can also be environmental, what's happening. A lot of people with mold toxicity or heavy metals or um, sensitive to EMFs, that will also impact our energy. And it's, it's putting a stress on our nervous system. But for the big, the big elephant in the room out of every mama is the wounds that we have, like that bag of rocks that we're carrying around that is causing us to react, to feel not safe in our own bodies, impacts the state of our energy. And if someone has chronic fatigue, I'm like, what's their trauma? It's the first thing I think of. What's the state? And I, just, I can just tell when people are in that state, when they've got chronic pain or... Um, or fatigue, I'm like, what's happening with the body? Because the body is an emotional scorecard. There's a book called that. Yes, we keep, we keep, it's, it keeps in. And for me, 13 years ago when I had my kidney tumour, I tell you what, I had so much suppressed anger. I was, it was like, it got to the point where it's like coming up out of me. And my tumour, it literally burst the blood vessel inside the tumour and grew to this massive thing to the point where I then had to get my whole kidney and I've got this massive scar that goes from here to here. And it was a big motherfucker, sorry, but it was. And it, I've got a photo of it. And my kidney is there and, the, and then the, the tumour which is inside and then it bled and it's, it's like the anger exploded at me because I had all this repressed emotion and these unresolved wounds, predominantly from the from my family, particularly my relationship with my father, certain experiences that happened to me 
as a kid, as a teenager, and they were heavy, me carrying it around. It was playing out in my relationships, and I just didn't know how to process it to the point where it actually manifested as a physical illness. And this is really, really common. And I was also exhausted. I didn't like my job. I didn't wasn't in a relationship I was happy. I wasn't satisfied. I was like, is this fucking it? Like, is there no, is there anything better than this? And I was 26. And I was like, you've got, is this it? Are we going to be doing this for the next, what, 40 years, 50? What, fuck me. I don't know how I can deal with this. And a lot of the, the other thing to think about, <laughs> I'm going down a rabbit hole here, but... We also get benefits sometimes when we get sick because we get our needs met. And it meant I met my needs by getting connection and getting sympathy. And, you know, I can go down that and that's another story for another day. But it did meet my needs. And I had to really, like, that is some deep work that I've done, you know, since then to really heal that. But I can tell you the gift on the other side from an energy point of view, is chalk and cheese. You know, it's night and day. <laughs> Let's just talk metaphors. So it, it like it 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 just completely changed the way that I interact with myself, my view, my own self worth. It took a lot of time, and I needed people to guide me through that, and it took a long time. And this is the why I work the way I do because when we are working with energy. We've got to look at many different aspects. And I got really into the food first when I got sick, and it got me so far. But if you really want to work on a deep level of healing, you've got to work on the emotional root causes of what's going on from you. And if you are struggling with energy and fatigue, there is biochemical reasons, yes, 100%, thyroid, um, but stress plays such a big role of it and it's like where's that root cause of that stress coming from and often it's from our unresolved emotional wounds aka trauma you know which you know is you that word is used a lot more now than what it ever used to be we never used to talk about that and but it is it doesn't matter what happened to you your experience is your experience and what happened to me is different to what happened to you or the next person and everyone has had an individual experience and i think sometimes often we can also gaslight ourselves and be like oh my childhood wasn't that bad or you know i just got yelled at a little bit or rah rah but ultimately it's like we're still we can still carry that around with us and you may have big things and little things that happen but you like ultimately it's like you don't want to be carrying that through the rest of your life you know, you don't want to be getting to your deathbed and going, fuck, like, I didn't live fully. I wasn't present. Like, I didn't enjoy And Life is short. It really is short. My mum passed away four years ago, and I'm just like, fuck, life is short. And when I – and I was also faced with my own mortality when I had my kidney out. And I was like, we've got to remind ourselves again and again that life is short, and we're here for a short time, not a long time. And we want to be living, like – a full, loving, amazing life, full of amazing memories and connections. And you can't do that when you don't have good energy because you're carrying a bag of rocks around with you or because you're not eating well and you can't actually go and do the things you want. You haven't got the physical energy to do that. But what's impacting those physical energy? Many different aspects. This is such a big topic, but this is why just going to your GP just going I'm low in energy is not going to probably not going to get you the answer you're looking for if you really want to be real honest and you're really ready to like go I need to level up and maybe you know for people watching this sometimes it doesn't happen until you get like a come to Jesus moment where you actually get faced with your own mentality and wish people didn't have to go through that to get the message or they're faced with a crisis like having miscarriages and not being able to get pregnant or, um, you know, um, going through death in the family or, you know, just really big life curveballs that life throws you. And then you're like, okay, hang on a minute. This is not, I need to live differently. This is not serving. Um, 
and we always get given these things for a reason and I believe I my my experience I was given for a reason and it's a big blessing but I just look at how I was then which is now 13 years ago and I was a completely different person energetically the energy that I had to go through the way that I could look after myself the way that I interacted with people the way the way I felt about myself and how other people felt in my presence and that is the biggest difference and we've got to constantly remind ourselves and I'm always finding new ways to up level upgrade updo things I do have moments where I do hit wall hit a wall and be like oh my god what am I doing and but the, th the difference now is I've got these fundamentals that I know I can go back to and I know work and when things my energy is not good I'm like what am I doing not right like what not right because I know what it feels like to good to feel really good and I'm finding th new things all the time to go I'm feeling really good you know like for example I went and did my ice bath this afternoon and I'm for red sauna and I walked out and I'm like oh this is the shit I feel so much better my energy feels better I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight I can't wait uh, it just gives, has gives me gives me a new zest to life um, my nervous system feels like it has this different ability to cope and I do a lot of nervous system stuff on my nervous system but it makes such a difference to our energy the way that our nervous system functions and we need the key ingredients to cook the cake for our nervous system to function and for the rest of our biochemistry to function so we do have energy and the vitality that we deserve because it is our birthright to go and live the life that we want to live and to go and give your gifts to the world in the way that you want to and we don't have to just put up with feeling like shit that's the truth um and so if this is you and you've gone all the way to this and you're watching this please like put a comment in the chat reach out let me know what resonated with you about this because there's a lot of different moving parts with this but it's also really it can be really simple when you've got some guidance or someone to see your blind spots of what you can't see someone who's walked the path before you um so reach out and let me know if you're looking for help and you're ready to take some action i hope you guys have a beautiful night let me know if you've got any questions i'm going to go and have a wind down now and go to bed um and let me know in the chat what your biggest takeaways are um chat to you later See you guys.